Welcome back uh, to our uh, Chalk Talk with Coach Flo. Uh, this is our seventh video we're shooting, seven weeks, uh, our sixth uh, football video. We did do a week on leadership and uh, teamwork. Uh, so we're back here in our seventh video. And uh, we're excited to be here again with you on Saturday. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying your weekend. Uh, and hopefully you're getting some out of these videos. Uh, appreciate all those that have subscribed to the video so far. Um, and, um, you know, if you have any questions or comments as we move along, please, you know, like I said, feel free to, to ask and interact if there's anything you think um, that I, I haven't covered or, or uh, I need to cover. Um, once again, please subscribe to the video, um, uh, hit the like button and, and then hit the bell for future videos. Or, like I said, we're pretty much doing a video a week uh, between my son and I. So uh, just about every Saturday, we try and uh, try, Frankie tries to get it uploaded and uh, going by earlier in the week, so you can start taking a look at it. Uh, today we're going to go back to our topic from last week. It's a four-week topic. Uh, it's a four-part topic on inside zone. So we're focusing on inside zone uh, this week as we did last week. RPO, which for those that may be new to football, means one pass option. And it's part two. It's the second version of what we talked about last week. Last week, we talked about uh, running the ball inside zone, both to the three technique and to the two eye. We talked about techniques in terms of running the ball, uh, line uh, techniques. We talked about uh, code words that we would use. Or we talked about uh, tug uh, was a tackle, was tackle and guard working together. Chug was uh, center and guard together. And uh, solo was just a tackle. Um, so we talked about that stuff, but today what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to talk about you when know, we throw in the word lock, um, and that's really the critical word right here. You know, the word lock now will tell the quarterback and the offense tells everyone on offense that now he has it's a, it's a true run pass option. Um, you know, whereas the first day last week, you know, we talked about the bubble. Uh, uh, we talked about the zone. You know, we just called 24 and 25. Indy, we were running zone. You know, he was still reading. He could throw the bubble if that end bended. But now, if we say lock, he knows his primary read is the lock. His primary read is to try and throw the ball. He can run the ball, but it's the other end of the spectrum. So, last week it was run first, pass second. Lock tells him it's pass first, run second. Okay, so I'm going to dive right into it. Uh, once again, um, as a reminder, as I've done in all my videos, uh, uh, my name is Jerry Flora. Um, I uh, uh, you know, have 28 years of uh, college experience as a football coach, as an administrator, as a teacher. Um, you know, I've taught uh, in high school. I've taught in uh, parochial school. Um, I've been an administrator a number of times. I'm currently doing an internship right now um, in, in, higher, in uh, athletic administration to try and be an athletic director and kind of take my career to the next level. I think with anything you do, whether it's football, whether it's, whether it's, um, you know, uh, whether it's business, whatever it is, it's all about leadership. And I, and I feel like my 28 years, I've learned a lot about being a leader, being a motivator, being organized, being detail-oriented, and those are things I take very seriously. And even as something as little as this, as a 20-minute video that we're posting for everyone to see, I take it very seriously. So with that said, uh, we get right into it. So we call it 24 and 25. Those are the numbers. Um, if the T was in the backfield, if we flipped it with the R, we call it 34 and 35. Once again, you could call it whatever you want. I'm telling you what we called it. Uh, Indy, we used... Uh, NFL teams for run game, so Indianapolis Colts was inside zone. So we abbreviated, we'd say Indy Colts, we'd say Indianapolis Colts, say whatever you want. Okay, so getting right into it, I have a 4-2 four, four defense lined up with a 3 technique here and a 2 eye here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about, we just talked about the bubble from last week. The first thing we're going to talk about is the slant slant option. Now, I found that this was probably one of our best um, pass plays from this concept, and that played hand-in-hand -hand with the snag. 
So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to, you know, obviously, once again, sell the run to throw the ball, but if the run's there, you want to run the ball, okay? So the read now in lock, so if you remember last week, if you watched last week's video, in regular zone without lock, we were, we were leaving him. And the tackle would work with the guard to the next level. And the quarterback would, his, this, this was his first read. If he bended, if he bended, quarterback would pull it and then read what the next guy did. Similar to a triple option effect. If he came up field or came out, he gave the ball. Okay, so now we use the word lock. And by saying lock, what that means is that this tackle is locked on with that end. Okay, so now the read for the quarterback goes to the next guy, which is there. So if we're locked there, the guard now is still stepping here. The center and guard now are stepping and eyeing this, okay? And then you have a solo here on the end. The tailback, when he comes flat, he comes downhill. If he doesn't get the ball and he has the block, he would block him. So protection-wise, if from a pass protection standpoint, you were in good shape. Okay? But once again, the line, they were taking their steps. The tackle was taking his, his uh, lateral step. The guard and tackle were working together. You know, he had a three technique, so he would that pick it up and put it down. So he had a three technique here, so, you know, he would step and, and put it down, and he would engage aggressively. And what you got a lot of times is when this happened, you watch this guy. So now the route concept was, now the key was these receivers had to make it look like they were blocking. So they'd get off the ball lazily or... They get off the ball like they were going to break down or whatever the case is, and then they would break on slants. This R guy would bubble. So the same concept as last week as the, the bubble concept with two blockers, you've just set that up by running block and slant and a bubble. And here's your read. And in my experience... First couple of times, you know, like if a team gives you a two shell, they may they may rock and roll. But a lot of times, man, if you're in enough zone here, this back is looking to fill. This Sam, in my experience, is looking at this. He's peeking. Because a lot of times defensive coaches will tell guys to play areas and not men if it's if it's zone. But guys are still they're still always peeking. So all it takes is this guy to peek a little bit and move. Well, here you are, right here. There's your slant ball. And that's why the RPO concept is so good. I mean, a lot of, some people are with it, some people are not with it. So this guy peaks, fine. This guy blitzes. This guy tries to come down. You're still fine. Okay? This guy sits. He sits. All right, he stays, he drifts. You got the bubble. The corner peaks, comes to take this. He comes down. You Now you throw that wider. So you have so many options. That's why they call it a run pass option. Okay? So you're looking to, in lock, you're looking to throw the ball. Okay? Because you're locked up on the end. You're, you're telling the, the line we're protecting. Okay, so you're not really giving the ball. The only way you may give the ball is if this happens. Let's say this, this will would come up here on the ball, which is not very sound. And, you know, you, you feel comfortable. Because remember, this guy here is not being blocked. You don't have a guy for him. It's not like zone where they're scooping. So if he were to come out here and you felt you can give the ball and he could sneak through there, fine. But the goal here on this particular play is to set up the next time. Remember, every play you run sets up the next play. You know, I used to tell our quarterbacks, you know, don't get frustrated when a bad play happens. 
just get ready for the next play. You know, as a coordinator, what I've learned, what I learned from being a coordinator, just like as I learned being a head coach and administrator and, and, and AD and all that stuff, is you got to be ready for the next thing that happens. You got to be ready for the next thing that happens. You got to know. So, you know, like I always tell guys, hey, listen, don't get frustrated. You know, if I call a bad play, I can't get frustrated. I got to think about the next play. You know, the goal is to then run a good play. So here's your lock. Okay? Sometimes what you'll get is now you may have a really good receiver over here. And, they, you know, the teams want to put a bracket guy over there. And now they, they don't want to give it up. So they bring the safety down. They put the safety in the middle of the field. All right, this guy here is playing like here. You got your mic probably slides to here. So it still looks like a 4 2 look. Okay? Now, when you have one high, your read changes. Okay? When it's too high, remember, we were reading the sand. Well, in one high, you're still reaching the sand, but now you're reading them in here. So now, now is where you are reading them there. So if. In the, they still run the same route concept. So he's got the slant. He's got the slant. He's got the bubble. And you say to yourself, well, coach, well, why aren't you reading the strong safety now? Because you read the sand when he was out there. No, you still read the sand. You know why? Because once again, he's going to peak in the backfield. You're running up this. You know, he's going to peak. Get sucked in here or there. When that happens, you throw it right behind him. Because this guy's not going to come down. He's probably playing man free. He's playing deep. Nobody gets deeper than him. You know, if he's going to man up, he may just come over here on the snap of the ball, which means then he's manned up with this guy or manned up here, but he's going to stay where he is. So that's your read. That's why we tell the quarterback, sell it. That's why the tailback is inside like a tackle. So the quarterback takes the snap, steps to the line, Let's the running back develop so that the Sam has to commit and then pull the ball and throw the ball. As opposed to just flash and throw. You flash and throw, this guy's going to be good enough to do this and do that. That's why I got to sell it. That's why the run has to look like the pass. That's why the pass has to look like the run. Okay? So staying on this against this defense... Okay, we're still running lock, all right? We're locked up here, all right? Let's say we change the front a little bit. Let's go Oki. Okay. Okay, so you're saying to yourself, okay, so who am I reading now, coach, in an Okie? Well, you're not reading, you're still reading the sand. Nothing changes. That sand may be on the ball. All right? If he's on the ball, then you go to your next off-the-ball read. So if he's on the ball, then your next off-the-ball read is here. But once he decides to drop to a linebacker depth, he's the read guy. That's the key. Once, if he's on the ball, it's the next off the ball read inside of him, which is him. If he's off the ball, he's the read guy. So here you are. You're locked. These two guys are stepping here to climb. All right, he's solo, and he's stepping here. We don't worry about him. He's the buck. In snag, what you're going to get is a changeup. You know, because now you're banging the ball to him, banging the ball to him, banging the ball to him. You're throwing the ball here. You're occasionally throwing it there. And anyway, get to the Z. Now he comes out and stalks, runs a corner. He runs the same route. He comes off the ball and sits and runs a snag route and sits right there. So what he does is you can teach it as he comes like he's cracking and turns and sits. Or he goes vertical, turns and sits. Either way, he's in this window. So once again, if he peaks, 
Okay, he drops. He comes here, bang, right there. All right, so that you got that read. If for some reason he drops, okay, he takes this. He comes here, you got that. If the sand, the safety just sits there on here, you got that. Okay, because once again, remember you got you got three over there too. Now you say, well, coach, how do I know when I have to run the ball? So now what happens is you're killing them on that. So now the sand widens. We said that's the read guy. So now on the snap of the ball, here's your sand. Well, now they got their three covering your three. So now you're golden. This is what we used to tell guys. If we're six for five, not worrying about him because we don't, we never bounce it outside on zone. We're running the ball. So that's where the run pass option becomes a run. Once that linebacker, so he's watching him, and he's sitting out there like that because he's afraid of this, because you hit that, or he's trying to take that. Now you got your here. You got these two guys working together. Okay? Which is, which is your, your, your chug, your center guard. You got your, we call this the solo here on the will. And you got here, and now boom, here you go. You're in that gap, you're in that gap, you're cutting it there. You don't go out here, because you don't have anyone to block him. Okay, yeah, you can crack him, but now you don't have anyone to block him. Don't make it more difficult for yourself. This inside zone is a package in its own. I showed you one concept last week, I'm showing you another one this week. So you got your four-man look, you got your three-man look. Okay, now, because we want to try and keep to time, now I'm going to show you a single man side read. Remember, three is here, two eyes here. What do we say two weeks ago? We said we like the run zone to the three technique. So now you have a perfect option. You want to run to the three technique? Fine. You still have a run pass option because here's your run pass option. It's a one-man route. And it's best against two high safeties. So where's your read? First inside line, first person inside. Right here, read guy. Here's your lock. He's here. Okay? These two guys here are working up. You got a solo. You got a solo. So you got a lock, a solo, a solo, and a chug. Because it's run pass. He's inside like a tackle. He's coming to the ball, coming downhill. Here's the read. He comes in. Block, 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 slant. Now you have a weak side throw. Now you got all your strength over there. You got your three technique in that direction. Now you, you got a high safety in a corner. Quarterback takes the ball here. He's right here. We're going to the three. Pull, steps, and throws. Okay, say so. We'll cut. What happens now? So now, so that that's so once again, here's your read. Okay, and then over here, what you got is because your your run pass option this side, these guys will just block. They go back to their old rules, which is bubble bubble block, responsible for these guys. Those guys should never be involved in the play. So if you look at this play. We essentially have the box blocked, and we have one receiver against two guys, but we're manipulating it because we're trying to run the ball to throw the ball. Okay? So if for some reason this happens, the safety stays high, and now on the snap of the ball, he starts to do this, now you know you're giving the ball. Yeah, you could probably throw the slant if you wanted to, 
But why why screw around with that? He's on here. These two for those two. He's here. He's there. And now here you go. Now your only other scenario in this is if they bring the safety down. What do you do? Well, I'd love for you to tell me what you do. Now the safety comes down. Because they, they game plan and against this set, you like to throw the slant to the backside. That's what they're game planning. Okay, so what you do is this. Okay, even though even though the, in this situation you got that safety out here, you're reading him because it's one receiver to the one receiver side. This is the, this is the rule. It's the only time you read the strong safety. I said before over here to the one receiver side, you still read the Sam. To the three receiver side, you read the Sam. To the one receiver side, the rule breaker is you got to read the strong safety. Because he's the guy that's going to dictate whether you're going to throw that ball or not. So you still look at him, and then this is your read guy. So what do you do? Well, you don't want to go in there, so now you change his route. His route is either a fade. Or fade stop. And you say, so how do you know the difference? Well, if on the snap of the ball he turns and runs, well, you're not going to get the fade. Now you throw the fade stop. So he throws on the break at six yards, comes back, it's a five-yard play. So quarterback's here. Right? He sees the safety out there. Safety comes down, or maybe safety drops. He's not impeding this throw. You bang the ball there. Snap of the ball. Pressure comes. Maybe there's a pressure. There's some sort of game coming. Man the man. Run the go. Throw the fade. So now you're here. Boom. You take a step back. Throw the fade. So you got your run pass option both strong. You got bubble in the, in the first day. You got slant slant, which we would just call Syracuse. So we just called 25 Syracuse. You call it uh, Alabama Syracuse. Alabama meant all, so it meant double slants. But the guys knew that it was slant slant bubble. So you just called it Syracuse. Or you called when Snag, and the code word for that was St. Louis. And the reason why is because Snag was a five-step, and in our five-step game, we used baseball teams. But in our three-step game, we used college football teams. So this was a, 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 a five-step, so it was snag, so it was St. Louis, so we would call, you know, tri trips left or trips right, um, you know, 25 snag. And then you'd throw in the word lock, and lock told the tackle he was locked on. If you didn't throw in the word lock, the tackle knew he had to climb to the well. The quarterback read the end. Here was his first read. Here was his second read. So in this look, this is his first read. This is his second read. So he's looking to see what he does, and then he's throwing off of him. Once again, remember, he still, he still pulls, but it's hard to pull and run because you got a locked up on the end. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully we got, we got some good concept in today. Uh, tomorrow, uh, next week, we're going to go to part three, and part three is going to be now we add motion into it. We give you motion. We give you jet sweep motion. We give you orbit motion, we give you fake motion, and we show you how it still plays into the RPO concept. So you could be a jet swim team and run the RPO. You could be an option team that runs the orbit motion and runs the RPO. So you got all that stuff. And then the following week, as we start to get into week four of this concept, that's where we take the tight end and we start to move him around. And we start to do games with the tight end or the H-back. So hopefully you get something out of this. Once again, uh, inside zone RPO, run pass option, uh, week number two. Uh, chalk talk with Coach Flo, uh, head coach's corner. Um, remember to su 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 subscribe, like, and hit the bell. Uh, have a great week. Take care. <laughs>